Now, the alley shrimp is probably one of the most popular uh, salmon flies uh, around. Uh, there's one or two others very um, similar, but the see the standard alley shrimp is up there with, me, with the top, uh, probably even the top. But it's a great style, a great pattern, colour combination is great for uh, fishing in, in our waters for the salmon. So thread I'm going to be using, I'm just going to use a red thread. You can use a fluorescent thread if you wish, you there's different types, but a standard red thread was probably originally used. Uh, you could use a red varnish as well if you're finishing the fly, but I found that just standard red was fine. Now, hook choice, there are lots of hooks out there. This is the Fuller Mill, this is the Magni Double in silver. It's a size 8. Uh, suits the fly, you could use a standard black nickel or black, whatever you want. Uh, or even gold if you want. It's, you could mess about with the pattern, but the silver is very popular. So I've waxed the thread and started the eye. Just going to work my way down, just about maybe 4 or 5 mil. and then I'm going to catch in the tag. Now the tag can be either a flat silver, or in this case I'm using a, an oval silver tinsel. It's the back, so I'm going to catch it on the way down, and this is a small. I'm just going to wind the thread to the point where it's just going to start to come round the bend. Just about, just about there. So a couple of times more. We should probably be halfway between the point and the bar by the hook in this style. Then we wind down four turns, so we're winding back around the bend slightly, and then we're bringing the, the tinsel underneath in between the hooks. And if you can see there, I'm locking in the tag. So make sure the thread is the other side so that you can catch it in. Now, what I normally do is just take it around about halfway back up. Fold it back, or bring it back, keep it in the underside of the, the hook, and then, I, then I'm ready to tie in the tail. That tidies it up, basically separates, which is this is going to be the rib now, from the tag. So if you lose your tag, you'll still get your rib. Now, tail, it's just a basic bucktail, in this case, a hot orange. Fibres, it could be as long and as thin as you like and as heavy as you just work it to suit yourself. You'll get away a preference to the, the, the amount you like. Uh, it's to get a nice balance, you don't want to overdo it. Uh, so bring enough out to form your tail. Now I'm just gonna stack it up. You could sit and line it up, which I do as well by just bringing them out. But for speed, I'm just gonna quickly tips first into a hair stacker. Tap on the desk. This will line the ends up, as you can see there. Then remove it from the stacker. Just look for any broken ends. You can get, move them out of the way. Length, I say, is entirely up to you. The lengthwise. I mean, there's if you, to be within proportion of the flies when you're tying them. As I say, this is a size eight. So if I use, say, the length of the hook, full length of the hook. The tail is twice that, so there's one, there's two, and that's tied over the back. And if I do that with size 10, it should be in proportion, and so that we've got all different sizes. So and then trim that away, so it's a full length of the body. So you've got to imagine there's a wing going on here, there's a hackle in front, so you get, you've got to give yourself plenty of room. Flash, I'm using some crystal flash, I'm going to use a couple of strands. Early crystal flash, the length of the tail, just tie that one top, two or three turns up, fold it back, and this will basically tuck it in, trim it the length of the tail, and there we are. Now what I'm going to do here is just continue up the body, just make sure you've tied the the hair in, just keeping it nice and tight. Wax your thread. Now I'm halfway down, so I'm bringing it halfway back. We tie in some red floss. Now, just basically, it's a uni red floss. It's continuing down to the, the tail, tying the floss in up against the tail. Far easier to do that. 
bring it straight up halfway and then we can then wind our floss up from the first part of the, the body which is the is red. The lightest colour is always to the back. So if you're tying shrimp type patterns, if it's yellow, black or yellow, red, say yellow would be the back, red would be the front. Uh, in the alley shrimp it's, it's red, black so obviously the, the lightest is the red at the back and then the front is black. So then tie that in. Trim this a length of the second part of the body. Make sure there's no steps. Let's get the black floss, same again, it's just a uni black. Let's wind this up. Just tidying things as we go. Nice straight turn. Just open the floss out slightly. And then work all the way up. Just give yourself plenty of room now. The, the wing of the fly is grey squirrel and tippet, golden pheasant tippet, so you've got to give yourself at least in this size of fly looking at at least 3 to 4 mil. So then you bring the rib up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 turns, catch it in, make sure it's nice and tight, wax your thread, gives you the extra grip. And you want to have your thread back ready to tie in your wing. Trim away your rib. See how it's sitting. That looks okay. Now we've got a grey squirrel. Just a grey squirrel. Just natural grey. Now I'm going to stack this as well. You could bring it 90 degrees from the stem and the tips will line up. But I'm going to stack it. So basically remove any under fur before you put it into the stacker. Again we'll do the same tips first. Tap on your desk. You see the tips are all lined up. Remove it from the stacker. Now first thing I'm going to do, make sure you've got wax in your thread. Now I go down the ones and then rub my finger on the, on the thread. That takes away any excess you need the grip when you're going to tie it this way. You can either tie the wing on this one top, some on top, some on bottom. Or what I like to do is roll it around. Now you, it's practice, you need to practice it. Tips can be as short as long the wing. If you were tying that on a standard wing, the, the, the wing would be just slightly by the bend of the hook. So that's where I'm going to do that. So basically on top and then I'm going to wind. So I allow the thread just to encourage the hair all the way around the shank. Just by keeping it tight. There's no, there's not much tension there. All I'm doing is keeping the thread taut so that it's nice and tight and allows the hair to run round the shank. And there we go. Just practice. Three or four turns in, make sure it's not going to move. Trim away the waist. And then come underneath. Just make sure, watch your thread when you're doing that. Checking the hair is all trimmed. We will. It's quite easy to miss one or two. Again, a wee touch of wax. Continue down to the eye. Nice base of thread down for your golden pheasant, which is part of the wing. Now, golden pheasant tip it. So we've got a full feather. First thing I'm going to do is remove basically the rough or the fluff from the bottom and any fibres I don't want. Now what I like to do is to roll the fibres, just roll them within my fingers like that. And what that does is lift the fibres from either side on top just by simply rolling it back and forward like this. Then what I do is get the length and it shorter. So this, the golden pheasant I would tie to, the tips would reach the, the tag or the end of the body. So there's the length I want. Hold that on top, pinch and loop three or four turns, and then you just tap it. And then slightly, what I like to do is just take the fibres towards the eye with my finger, and it creases it up here, slightly lowers it, and at the same time it opens the fibres out. And then we come in, trim away, wax the thread again, 
make sure that it's secure. Nice base of thread down for a hackle. Now I'm using a, it's just a, basically, it's a, an Indian hen neck. I've dyed it hot orange. So I've got a feather here. Length, shy of the length. I mean, you can you, you can be as long and as short as you like. I like plenty. I like plenty of movement. So being a hen hackle, I like to tie it in by the tip. So what I'm going to do here is catch it in. Now when I catch it in, I catch in some of the fibres just on the stem there. So I'm drawing it back. You can see there, I don't know, you can see there's some of the fibres are actually there as well as the stem. I catch that on the top, come down two or three turns, fold the tip back and then come over that, it tucks it in and gives it more grip. Now I just slide my thing and thumb back, there's the tip the feather, we can then trim this away and then we can wind the hackle. So again I'll just give a touch of wax. When you, these feathers, depending how good your feather is, depends how many turns you can you, you want or how many turns you can get out of the feather. Now this is a good quite a good feather so a nice straight turns. So there's turn and a half to come into my second now. For the size of fly, I'll probably do another one, but what I'm going to do is just go slightly back here. Some of the fibres, because as a wind I want to fold these fibres back. What's coming, what's in the way is these two points. Jag your fingers. So just be careful when you're tying, especially on the double. So, it's still holding the hackle fire, but just using my fingers. You can use hackle plaz if you don't like tying it this way. Now, I'm just basically putting three or four turns in. It's a bit messy looking just now, but I can tidy this up. So all I'm going to do is fold it back. So I've come down, as you can see, three or four turns. Just watch the fibres. Just taking my time, watching my fingers with the points of the hook. Just be patient with it, and then secure these in by folding it back. Any fibres that's like that one there is want to go forward, I've just draw it back with the thread. And then just form a nice hedge using the thread. Just taking your time. Nice straight turns. Now, here's the tip of the hackle. There it's there. There's plenty of turns in there, so what I like to do is just go break that off. Very neat cut when you do that. Always keeping the thread tight as well. And then we've got finish. And there we go. Bring out these fibres. That's fine. And then, what I like to do, a couple of coats of varnish. Well, for speed, you can use, like, I like to put super glue on, on the brush, all the way around. Just come in with a nice layer of. In this case, super glue or varnish on first, allow that to set. Got a nice smooth head, you've got a nice shiny head as well without any lumps. And there we are. It's a basic alley shrimp. Uh, tied to suit my, basically suit myself. As I say, you can change the proportions, you can reduce it, like it slightly longer, shorter, tail or even longer, or reduce the fibre. Tie it to suit yourself. But anyway, that's a good valley shrimp pattern, and I hope you enjoyed that.